Hey guys, this is Blair with the Taylor team and I've got Jenny here today, our transaction coordinator. Today we're going to talk about uh, the steps and the listing process and Jenny's got some questions to help move that along. So Jenny, you, you got? got it. Blair, okay. how do you determine how much to list a house for? So what we do if we're pricing something is we'll pull comparables uh, off of the MLS and we try to stay within 20% of the square footage of your home, okay? Ah. And then we also wanna make sure, in some subdivisions you have older homes and newer homes, we wanna make sure that your the homes that we're comparing with are within like a 10 year range, okay? So the other thing that's really important is we need to find three comparables, not just one, okay? okay. And, and if we can, sometimes if a subdivision is really small or we don't have many sole comparables in there, then we have to move out, but we don't wanna go out any further than what we have to. We're gonna to try to stay location-based. Okay. If we can find them within a mile, that's what we do. So then we break it down to an average, an average price per square foot. And then we can tell what the average range for your house is and also what the higher side of the price is for your house as well. So that's how we do it. And I don't pick the price. I basically just guide the person. And then the seller will say, okay, Blair, here's where we, where we feel comfortable in determining our price. And also like how many days on market will take us to sell. All right. Well, once that's determined, I know we need to get ready for some pictures at the yes. house. Yes. What can the homeowner do to prepare for the pictures? So probably the most important thing is, I mean, most of you folks watch HGTV, but you want to declutter. Okay. So if there's anything on your countertops, whether it be your bathrooms, uh, kitchens, Ooh, yeah. um, okay. you know, especially bathroom countertops, yeah. so <laughs> we'll, we'll take pictures and have to go back and reshoot the bathroom. Um, <laughs> and if, you know, People generally know if you have a lot of stuff, a lot of trinkets, like we got to get rid of those. Um, sometimes I'll hire a stager if I feel like we really need to get some help. Uh, and they'll come through on an iPad, take pictures and draw arrows of where the person needs to move the things to get around. Oh, the pictures. nice. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So the reason I like that is it used to be they would come through like a notepad. It just makes it harder. Like with the iPad, like they email those to you and you just go picture by picture, room by room and get it fixed and ready. So you know when you're done with that last picture, then you've got it ready for pictures. Okay, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, now I've heard this a lot, but I don't think a lot of people know, but can you tell everyone what is a seller's property disclosure? So basically seller property disclosure just lets everybody know, all the buyers, they know everything you know about the house. Now, you can't, if you don't know about something, you can't put it on there. But if you do have knowledge of something, whether it's been a roof that's replaced, even problems that you fixed, uh, or if there's things that you haven't fixed and you need to disclose that so people know, okay. some things you can't. Like, for example, if a property is in floodplain, right? That's just something that we can't fix, but we need to note that because it can affect the buyer's insurance, right? right? So right. really, it's a limitation of liability. So you want to make sure and be completely honest when you're filling that out. So that way the buyer understands everything about the property. Plus, the last thing we want to do is leave something off of there and then we end up having the contract terminate because they find the problem anyway. Right, right. right. So it just gets ahead of it and makes sure everybody's on the same page. Got it. So, now, I know the buyers have closing costs, mm -hmm. but do the sellers have closing costs too? So yeah, sellers have closing costs. It's just the buyer's closing costs are higher. So an average buyer's closing cost is about 3%, okay? If you're figuring a seller's closing cost, it's gonna be about a percent to a percent and a quarter of the overall, okay? So and that's by that's, the purchase price one? Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, okay. the purchase price. So so if you've, you know, basically if you've got a uh, $300,000 house, is going to be, you know, call it thirty-five hundred bucks. Okay. You. Okay. So, got so it. But what that takes care of is your taxes and insurance prepaid, oh. your revenue stamps, okay. your deed prep, uh, and then a lot of other little things that happen through the title company in the closing process, including the terms. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, one last question, Blair: Can a seller just reject an offer if they don't like it? You can. I don't advise it. If you're ever going to put a deal together, and I tell people this all the time. If it's your house and you love it and someone gives you an offer that you don't like, like people's natural reaction, well, sometimes they say things are nice and sometimes they, just <laughs> right. say it, they can tell you, hi, right? We'll reject it. But I, but we try, and Jenny does a lot of our negotiating, we try to always come back with their best counter. You try not to let it hurt your feelings because for a lot of these buyers, if they make an offer 
you never know how they were talking to the negotiator or anything else. I've seen so many times where you come back with a counter, they decide to work, they accept it, and you move on close. Absolutely. But if you don't counter, then you can't put the deal together. Right, right. And so if you upset them the way they upset you, you're not going to put together anything. So always counter. Always counter. Perfect. All right. That sounds great. Well, hopefully we've answered all your questions around the listing process. And Jenny, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, just send us an uh, uh, email with the information below or give us a shout. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.